praise the Lord and welcome to this Sunday morning worship with Beulah Refuge Tabernacle and First Refuge of Barnwell. Service will begin in three minutes. We invite you to like and share this live stream service at this time. now have our call to worship this morning with our opening musical hymnal by Brother Jonathan Hampton, followed by our opening prayer and scripture by our pastor, Bishop David A. Smith.
praise the name of the Lord. As our brother Jonathan played that very familiar hymn made famous by the late Andre Crouch, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. Thank God that our God gave us promises that we can depend upon. We certainly welcome you to Sunday morning worship with the saints from Beulah Refuge Tabernacle and First Refuge of Barnwell. We certainly bless God for being able to come together on this beautiful Sunday morning to worship and to praise the Lord via Facebook, uh, Zoom, conference call, and online stream. We certainly welcome you and we bless the Lord. I want to send out my condolences to the Jackson family in the passing of their brother. Amen. Let us keep Pastor Daryl Jackson and uh, Lady uh, uh, Rosen uh, here in Orangeburg and the entire Jackson fa family in our prayers in Jesus' name. We want to take for a scripture reading from the 28th chapter of the book of Matthew and verses 9 and 10. Matthew 28 verses 9 and 10. And the scripture reads, And they went to tell his disciples, Behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and fell and held him by his feet and worshiped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there they shall see me. Thank God the commission is still alive today that we are to go and to tell that Jesus lives and he wants to abide in the hearts of men and women. We bless God and we do praise God for our being here and we are determined to worship and to praise the Lord as God has given us, amen, the ability to do it. And we will bless the name of the Lord. We will praise him. And at this time, we're going to be led further into our worship experience as our brother Jameer and our sister Shia Snell is going to lead us in praise and worship. Brother and sister Snell, God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. We ask that y'all worship with us in your homes um, as we do this country churchy uh, song in Jesus' name. Ezekiel said he saw him oh, yes. as a wheel in the middle of the wheel. Oh, yes. John talked about him oh, yes. in the book of the seven seals. Oh, yes. Some call him the Rose of Sharon, others call him the Prince of Peace. But I, I call, call Jesus, Jesus my rock. Well, Ezekiel said he saw him oh, yes. as a wheel in the middle of the wheel. Oh, yes. John talked about him oh, yes. in the book of the seven seas. Oh, yes. Some call him the Rose of Sharon, others call him the Prince of Peace. But I, I call, call Jesus, Jesus my rock. Oh, Jesus, my rock. Sweet Jesus, my rock. My Jesus, my rock. Sweet Jesus, my rock. oh, I know you. Don't deny me, he's always walked beside me. I call Jesus my rock. I call him Jesus, my rock. sweet Jesus, my rock. He's Jesus, my rock. sweet Jesus. Well, I know he won't deny me, he's always walked beside me. I call Jesus my rock. Well, I call him Jesus. My rock. He's a stone. My rock. That the builders rejected. My rock. Alpha and Omega. My rock. Prince of Peace. My, rock. my healer. My rock. I call him Jesus. My rock. He's Jesus. My rock. He's Jesus. My rock. He's Jesus. My rock. Alpha and Omega. My rock. He's Jesus. My rock. He's my leading force. I call him Jesus, my rock. Lord, we love you, my rock. in the midst of this, my rock. in the midst of this, my rock. I can go to the rock, my rock. 
right. I can ask for what I want. Right. Well, I know you won't deny me. Always walk beside me. I call Jesus my Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Welcome to worship with First Refuge of Barnwell and Beulah Refuge Tabernacle, where we are built on word, prayer, and praise. Our mission is to lead our community and surrounding areas into the presence of the Lord, where they by faith can ask and receive from the Lord the desires of their heart. We thank you for joining us this morning for service via Facebook Live and a conference call. And we pray that you are blessed today through the message that will be brought forth by our pastor. We invite you at this time to like and share this live stream service. Our announcements are as follows. This Wednesday, please join us here via Facebook Live at 7.30 p.m. for Pastoral Bible Study. Again, this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Join us here via Facebook Live for Pastoral Bible Study. Join us next Sunday as we host our virtual lobby for 10 to 15 minutes directly after service on next Sunday. Again, join us here next Sunday for 10 to 15 minutes after service for your our virtual lobby. You will receive a link via text from our sister Glorious Hampton by Saturday. Again, that's next Sunday, August the 16th. At this time, we would like to share with you the opportunity to support this ministry with your tithes and offerings via PayPal, Cash App, or U.S. Postal Service. You may visit our website at www.viewlerefugetabernacle.com and click the link online giving, or you may go directly through PayPal and search for Beulah Refuge Tabernacle. Our Cash App handle is dollar sign Beulah R-T, or you may give your gifts via the U.S. Postal Service by sending them directly to P.O. Box 886, Orangeburg, South Carolina, 29116. You may also send prayer requests by visiting our website at www.bullerrefugetabernacle.com and clicking the link online prayer request. Let us keep in mind and in our prayer, those of us who are on our prayer and sick list, those who have received surgery recently, or have been stricken by illness, or those families that are in bereavement, let us please keep them in our prayers. We ask also that we keep in our thoughts and prayers those throughout our country and our world who have been stricken by COVID-19. Let us continue to pray for God's covering and healing during this difficult time. Our quote for the week, it is not the inconveniences in my life that make me strong. It's my overcoming those inconveniences in my life through perseverance and the application of faith in pursuit of my goals in life. Bishop David A. Smith. Let us now bring our hearts and minds ready to hear God's dream of word through our manservant, our pastor, Bishop David A. Smith, after the morning Samaritan selection by Sister Dolores Smith. God bless you and have a great week. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We do count it honor and privilege to be in the house of the Lord, in your various homes, in the house of the Lord. But wherever you worship and praise him and give him glory, he is there in the midst. Believe me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. 
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Hallelujah. I am grateful in the name of Jesus. How many grateful people we have in their homes on today? Hallelujah, Jesus. I, oh, I am grateful for the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. I could go on and on and on about your words because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord, flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart is gratefulness. How many grateful people are you grateful in your heart? Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, I'm grateful, Lord. Yes, I'm grateful, Lord. I am grateful for the things that you have done for me. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. I could go on and on and on about your many works, Lord. Because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to give you praise, Lord. Oh, 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 flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart is gratefulness. How many grateful people out there? Are you grateful? Yeah, yeah. Grateful, 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 Yes, Lord, hold directly to you, Lord. 
Oh, you've been so good to me, Lord. You make so many ways, Lord. Oh, it's grateful man. Oh, Lord, I'm grateful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Flowing, flowing from my heart, from my heart the issues of life. Grateful Lord, grateful Lord, for all of your bountiful goodness toward me. The things that you've done for me, the doors that you've opened, the ways that you've made, and more importantly than anything else, this is the Lord is saying so beautifully unto the Lord. Thank you for saving me, Lord. For delivering my soul from the powers of darkness and translating me into the kingdom of his dear son i do bless him today i thank god as on yesterday august 8th i celebrated 55 years of being saved thank god on that sunday night in august of 1965 in a little wooden church house in Casey, South Carolina. God visited my soul and filled me with his Holy Spirit. And I thank God he's given me a man to go forward in him and to live for him and to love him and to worship him and to praise him. Because God is a good God. Yes, he is. And I do bless his wonderful and adorable name. We certainly again greet you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ and thank you for you're joining us on our Sunday worship service. It's been brought to you by uh, First Refuge of Barnwell and Beulah Refuge Tabernacle of Orangeburg. We thank God for these two congregations and their support of this ministry and for all of you that have joined us. And we do bless the Lord and do praise him for his graciousness toward our lives. And we praise him for all of you that have participated in the worship, our brother Jameer and Shia Snell, and then I said to Dolores, and for everyone, all that work in the background, and uh, and our brother Jonathan Jonathan uh, Hampton, Amen. We bless the Lord, Amen, and we do praise Him and glorify uh, the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. God bless you. We hope not to hold you too long, uh, but we want to share a word that is in our heart today, amen, in Jesus' name. Consider with me for two passages of scripture, both from the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, and Jeremiah 1 and 12 from the Amplified uh, version of the Bible. Jeremiah 29 and 11, and Jeremiah 1 and 12 from the Amplified. The scripture reads in Jeremiah 29, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Jeremiah 1 and 12 in the Amplified. Then said the Lord to me, you have seen well, and I love this part, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. I love that in the Amplified. I'm going to read it again. Then said the Lord to me, you have seen well, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. I want to speak to you today from the subject, I have his commitment. I have his commitment. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, it is in the name of your dear son, Jesus, that we come now, Lord, to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for all your definite promises. Thank you, Lord, that your word is true. Thank you, Father, that you don't have to speak in generalities to us, but you can speak specifically to specific problems and situations that we can expect specific answers. 
We pray now, God, your blessings upon us. We thank you, Father, for salvation, for the forgiveness of sin and your Holy Spirit abiding within us, keeping us and working on us and purging us and bringing us to the place that you'd have us to be. We pray now, dear God, that you would minister a word unto us, a word of life, that we may be able to grow and prosper thereby. Bless your people. Touch those that are sick and afflicted within their bodies and give deliverance, Lord, as only you know how to do. And we'll praise you and glorify you. We'll magnify you, dear Lord, for all of your goodness and your kindness and your graciousness toward us. Look down upon this troubled world and every situation and circumstance that is facing us, this pandemic. Lord, help I pray in the name of Jesus. We cry unto you, Lord, for there is no other source to deliver but you and you alone. Bless now, touch, heal, and deliver. Remember all the governmental leaders, our president, all the leaders of our country. We pray for them, Lord. They might seek you for wisdom as to where and how we need to go as a people. Bless now. Save the lost, that lost one, that one is near as hell, Lord. Reach now your hand and deliver them as a ram, a brand from the burning, and place their feet upon a rock to stay. Save and deliver. Touch, heal now, Lord God, as only you know how to do. And we'll ever praise you and magnify you. It's your servant's prayer now. In Jesus' name, amen. I have his commitment. Praise the name of the Lord. It, it is um, interesting as to how uh, throughout life's uh, experiences that we all have seen people in their verbal commitments uh, to one another in business relationships and personal relationships and marriages and people standing at the altar uh, before the minister to give their commitment to a marital relationship. Uh, we see people uh, in business transaction signing agreements and making their commitment to be faithful and committed to that business relationship. Uh, people involving themselves in community uh, relations and making certain commitments as to what they will do relative to the good of the neighborhood. Praise the name of the Lord. So commitment uh, is made and done uh, throughout our life, lives, experiences. Praise the name of the people making commitment to them. Uh, I've shared this with you all more than one time, uh, that when my grandbaby uh, Madison was just a little, little thing and was shortly after she was born and uh, Denise and Frank, they stayed here with us during the first month of uh, Madison's being here. And um, uh, I took the late night um, uh, time of caring for Madison since I was retired and everybody else was still going to work. And I took the late night shift to give her her feedings and, and take care of her until she was ready to go to sleep. And I'll never forget one night as Madison was just looking around the room with a little head bobbing from one side to the other, looking, trying to follow the light and see what she could see. And as I held her in my arms, I, I looked at Madison and I made Madison this promise. I said, Madison, Papa will never tell you, yo, yo, that you own your own. That was a commitment. Even though she did not understand it, she did not understand my my words. She did not. She heard them, but she certainly did not understand them. But the commitment was made by me. Praise the name of the. It was a commitment of my heart, the commitment of my strength and my resources, of my mental ability, uh, whatever it was that who I am, and I have. That commitment I made to my grandbaby as I held. And I was since when she was grown enough and old enough to understand it, made that commitment to her, recommitment to her. But it was nothing like that initial commitment that I made, that, that commitment that bound my heart to that vow that Madison. Papa will never say yo-yo to you. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, 
And God even made that promise to you, even when you did not even understand it or could comprehend it, that he will never tell you, yo, yo. For he has decreed and declared that lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Through every circumstance and every situation, every pandemic, if you will, every dilemma, every uh, problem, every work of the adversary, we have his commitment that I will not forsake you. Can I get a witness in the house? Praise the name of the Lord. The word commitment is defined as the state or an instance of being obligated or emotionally impelled. Are you listening to me? It is defined as a state or an instance of being obligated or emotionally impelled. That word impel means to have an urge or drive forward or on by or as if by the exertion of strong moral pressure. In other words, praise the name of the Lord, that this instance of God being obligated and emotionally impelled are urged by a strong moral pressure. <clears throat> Praise the name of the Lord. It implies obligation, which means that one holds oneself responsible to see that a specific end is met. <clears throat> Praise the name of the Lord. In other words, God holds himself morally <clears throat> responsible to see to the fulfillment of his word. Are you listening to me? Praise the name of the Lord. <clears throat> the performance of his word is of the utmost importance to God. This is why he said in Jeremiah 1 and 12 in the Amplified, he said, for I am alert and active, watching over my word. <clears throat> the performance of that word, that promise to you, that commitment to you is vitally important to God that it is kept and fulfilled as he promised it. <clears throat> Praise the name of the Lord. That's vitally important to God. To see that that word does not go down. To see that that word will not fail. The Bible says of the prophet Elijah, praise the name of the Lord, that God did not allow one word of the prophet to fall to the ground all the days of his life. <clears throat> Praise the name of God. That God speaks and he says that I will do, I will perform, I will see to it to come to pass. <clears throat> Praise the name of the Lord. Psalms 138 and verse 2 says, I will worship toward thy holy hill, thy holy temple. And praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. <clears throat> now you got to understand that this is just not a, 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 a statement to, to fill out space in an essay. Or to fill out some, some words in a little quaint saying. <clears throat> Praise the name of the Lord. But he said, I magnified my word, or I exalted or lift my word above all of my name. 
The Bible said that thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. The name of God was so precious to the ancient Jews that there are theologians that tell us that they actually forgot how to spell and even pronounce the name Yahweh. <clears throat> because they didn't go around calling Yahweh like we go around and say Jesus just in the time we felt like it. It was so sacred to them. It was highly exalted to them. <clears throat> and the Lord said here that I have magnified the keeping of my word above all the holiness of my name. That's how important God performing his word is to him. It's not just some dry loan words thrown out to get you off his back. You know, sometimes, you know, you, you, you promise your children certain things and they'll nag you and be at you about it and you just tell them anything just to get them off your back. And you look around and they're going doing, uh, what, why are you doing that? Because you told me I could do it. But I want you to know God didn't give you no promise to get you off his back. He gave you a promise because you are imparted to him. Hallelujah. I don't have to look at nobody else and envy them or, or their place. I know I'm important to God. Look at yourself and say, I know I'm important to God. Hallelujah. Listen what <clears throat> Psalms 105 and verse 42 says. I don't care what the adversary is doing right now because a lot of times we allow current conditions that I told you that current conditions has no impact upon the eventual outcome. And we look at what's going on right now, we get all bent out of shape because we, we look at it and say, oh, it ain't going to happen. But it, it will happen because God said it. Praise the name of the Lord. I said earlier in my prayer that God don't speak in generalities to us. He speak in specifics to us. I don't need no promise. Somebody to get right to me and say, well, you're going to get a, somebody I here going to get a thought. And God told me, hello, somebody. That could just be for any old somebody. But when God says something to you and you know that you heard it, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. That God's word is true. God is bound. He is obligated. He has obligated himself. Listen what Psalms 105, verse 42, through verse 43 says, for he remembered his holy promise. Mm -hmm. God didn't forget or forgot about it. Pastor might have forgot about it. The chairman deacon might have forgot about it. The church mother might have forgot about it. The first lady might have forgot about it. But God had never forgot. And you he might have even forgot. But God has not forgotten. You ought to look at somebody and say, I got his commitment. Thank you, Jesus. I got his commitment for David Alfred Smith. Jameer Snell, you got God's commitment to bless your life. To bless your wife, to bless your children, and to bless you, and He will do it. Every one of you listening right now, you got the promise from God that Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. I won't forsake you. I won't abandon you. You got His commitment to that. He watches over His word. I am active and alert. Oh, we gotta move on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. He's active about his word and the performance of that word to bring to pass every word of his mouth. 
Hallelujah. The promises of God are sure, and in him they are amen. It is his divine integrity that demands him. Did you hear what I just said? It is God's divine integrity, his devotion to do that which is right. Hallelujah. As God was speaking to Abraham before he went down to the Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, will not the judge of the earth do that which is right? The answer is rhetorical. He yes, he will. The answer is automatic. The answer is in the question. Yes, he will. The judge of all the earth. He remembered his holy promise. And Abraham, his servant. And brought forth his people with joy. And is chosen with gladness. His divine integrity demands him to keep his word. The Jewish people had received in Jeremiah 29 a promise from God. God had grown weary with them. He had grown angry with them. And called Nebuchadnezzar to come and to overrun Judah and carry them off into captivity in Babylon as punishment for desecrating the laws of God. Don't you fool yourself. God is angry with the unjust. <clears throat> God wants you to do what's right. Wants you to live right. Husband wants you to love your wives. Wives, he wants you to love your husband. Children, he wants you to be obedient to your parents. People on your job, God wants you to give your boss man an honest day's work. And boss men, God, are looking for you to pay them for a just labor. God wants you to do that's what's right. And so he was angry with Israel. And called Nebuchadnezzar to go into Judah and haul them off captive. But God made a promise through the mouth of the prophet Jeremiah that after 70 years of captivity in Babylon, away from Judah, away from Jerusalem, he desecrated the temple, hauled all the precious ornaments of worship into Babylon. <clears throat> it is here believed that theologians believe this is where the Ark of the Covenant was misplaced and lost and never really again found. But God gave a promise that after 70 years of captivity, I'm going to cause you to come back home. And he said, I'm going to call my servant Cyrus. He's going to give an edict, and he's going to command you to come back home. In, in Ezra, the first chapter, in, the, in verse 1, we see where God brings this 70-year promise. Some of us, my God, would have freaked out if we had to wait five years, some of y'all been waiting 10 years. Some of y'all been waiting a little over 10 years. But God turned around and brought your promise to pass. You ought to look at somebody and say, I got a commitment from God. And though he tarry, I will wait for him. Because I know when it comes, it will come and speak and not lie. It will not tarry, but he that cometh will come and not tarry. So in that 11, the first chapter of Ezra, we see where God gives commandment to Cyrus the Great, the king of Persia, to give my people permission 
to go back to Judah and set up worship. And God brought them out. Oh, yes. <clears throat> God will bring you out right in the midst of your afflictions. When we're in the midst of our trials, God will deliver us. Bible said many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. But in that sixth verse in that 34th Psalm, he said, this poor man cried. And the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his trouble. You ought to look at somebody and say, God will. Hallelujah. Tell yourself, God will. Thank you, Jesus. Many are the afflictions. Oh, yes. Don't you worry about it. You're going to get your share of troubles. You ain't got to look up nothing and be glad for no trouble. I'm not going to tell nobody I'm glad for no troubles. I don't know where people get that from. I ain't hunting up no troubles because I know enough is going to come. I ain't telling nobody I'm glad for no afflictions. But I thank God I'm glad I got power and strength enough to endure the afflictions. I got enough sense to know I got to go through to get to the blessing. But I ain't happy about it a bit. That's why I'm praising God for renewed strength, overcoming strength, empowering strength. Oh, God, strength to endure hardness as a good soldier because I got a promise from God that he will deliver me. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Oh, yeah, you ain't got to hunt none. They're going to come. Don't you worry about it. The adversary got his eyes on you. He see what's about to come. That's why you go before God and lie on you. And try to show God some old crooked stuff. See how he done got. Sometimes we do grow weary. Sometimes we do grow weak. And he's the first one to bring it to God's attention. Look at him. But God knows, my God, he knows how to renew your strength. Oh, yes. I know in whom I believe. I'm telling you now. And because we know the stability and the obligation of God, of his self-imposed obligation. Are you listening to me? Gabriel didn't have to come to God and remind him about his promise to Abraham. The Bible says he remembered his promise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I look at Sister Sandy Wright name come up on the screen just now. And it just dawned on me how we got such wonderful news about her son on this week. How God made promise he would deliver him. And God is delivering him. Hallelujah. God will not fail. I have his commitment. He has magnified his word above all of his name. He made my God the fulfilling of his promise to me more important than the reverence of his holy and righteous name. Did you hear what I just said? <clears throat> God made the fulfilling of your promise more important to him than the reverence of his name. Oh, you ought to tell somebody, I am important to God. <laughs> oh, God, my Savior. <clears throat> but when we recall these things, our faith is expanded. Because I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to require expanded faith. God had to remind Abraham of his promise. Told him that he would, he would bless him. He said, Abraham, get ye out from among your kindred and go into a place I'll show you. And I'll make of you a great nation. But his wife, Sarah's womb, was barren. And he had gone. And then the Lord took Abraham out. And told him to slay the animals. 
And the Bible said he slayed the animals and laid them out and fought off the fowls until the going down of the sun. Those were the buzzards that were coming to eat their fresh meat off the altar. The devil want to take your, your praise and your worship and your prayers off the altar of God. That's why he's turning up the heat. <clears throat> That's why when you thought you were coming out of one storm, my God, and another one was waiting on you to come. As I told you, my God, you either in a storm, coming out of one, or getting ready to go into one. But hold fast. Hold fast to your crown. Stand still. Wait on God. The promise is on the way. You got his commitment. And that's what you got to be assured of. And you're settling within that expands your faith to deal with your current and your own coming situations. Oh, yeah. Devil don't want you happy. He see you about to come into your blessing. He looking at you. He got his, his mealy, mealy mouse eyes on you. He saw what God has done for you. Yeah. I know, Sister Miller, I know you know what I'm talking about. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He see you, and he see the prosperity of God coming on your life. And he want to short circuit it. But the devil is a liar. Sitting back plotting and person, perpetrating. But it won't work. Because I got his commitment. He said he watched over his word to perform it. He said, I am alert and active watching over my word to perform it. My God, watching every little pitfall, little, every little imp from the devil, my God, that's coming, that's blocked your blessing. But it will not work, my brothers and sisters. God has given you a promise. Hallelujah. Like the children of Israel coming out of Egypt to, the, to their promised possession. And they came across the land of Moab with Barak being the leader. And he looked and saw them coming. He said, how can I stop this people? You ought to look at somebody and say, I can't be stopped. <laughs> oh, glory. Say, I won't be stopped. He said, how can I stop them? Go get me a soothsayer. The devil and all of his witchcraft. The devil and all of his lies. All of his hypocrisy. Cannot stop no weapon formed against you. Will prosper. And Barak sat there and said, Balaam. Call for Balaam, the noted prophet in the land. Come and curse these people. Promise him a great possession. Say, put a curse on him. Don't you worry about no curse. You tell the devil, I can't be cursed. I won't be cursed. Hallelujah. And Balaam came to curse the people of God. This great crowd of witnesses coming out of Egypt to their promised land. The Bible said that Balaam stood on the mount and looked over into the valley and saw the tents of the people of God. And he said, oh, how beautiful are thy tents. And the Lord told Bill, I'm like, get out of here, man. Don't you dare try to curse these people. For whom I have blessed, they are blessed. Balaam went back to Balaam and told him, said, I can't do it. He said, if you give me a house full of gold and silver, I cannot but speak that which God gave me to speak. I come today to tell you that God's speaking a blessing over your life. Listen for the voice of God. You've got his commitment. Balaam said to Balaam, Numbers 23 and 19, God is not a man. Thank God he's not. Wishy-washy. 
for you today and against you tomorrow. And the next day, well, I don't know. But thank God, God is con constantly, consistently the same. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changes not. If God said it a thousand years ago, it is as true right now, this very moment. It will be that same truth 10,000 years in the future. God cannot and will not change. He cannot lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should have no need to repent. Hath he said, and shall not he do it? Or hath he spoken, and I love this part, and shall not he make it good? God said, if it ain't going right, I'll make it go right. I'll make the darkness light before you. Your high places, I'll bring them down. When they lie on you, it seems like their lies working. God said, I'll expose them. Apostle Peter tell us in the second chapter of 1 Peter, my God, to let your, your, uh, your, let your, uh, your conversation or your lifestyle be honest before the Gentiles or the unsaved or the unjust. Let your conversation, your lifestyle be honest before the Gentiles that whereas they speak of you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they shall behold. Look at somebody and say they got to see some good works out of you. They need to see some commitment out of you. They know you're going through. They don't need to hear no whining and belly aching. Well, I got to No, yes, or yes. You're going to have trials. In this world, you should have, my God, trials and tribulation. But Jesus said, I prayed for you. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, they're going to come. But I got this commitment to bring me out. I'm not going to struggle with it. And Abraham fought off those fouls until the going down of the sun. The Bible said Abraham fell into a deep sleep. And at the going down of the sun, the Bible said a smoking furnace walked between those pieces. It was a custom in those days when men entered into very serious negotiations and contract. They would slay animals and they together would walk through the division of those parts and swear to one another, I'll keep my word to you. And if I don't keep my word to you, may what we've done to these slain and cut up animals happen to me. And that sealed their agreement. And the Bible said, as he had promised Abraham, I'm going to give you a son. Then Abraham fell into deep sleep. And the Bible said, a smoking furnace. Have you ever had a smoking furnace to pass through your sacrifice? That you made, God made you a promise without any asking you to do anything? I've said this with you all many times before, and I'll share it with you today, and probably many times yet to come. But I stood in my den in my home, having some very serious pro financial problems, some very serious problems. I won't go any further. Leaning upon the mantle of my fireplace, very troubled within my spirit. You ought to look at somebody and say, listen for the voice. Ah, hallelujah. Listen for the voice of the commitment of God. Say, Lord, I want to know. And Mother Bessie Jones said, Lord, I live for you. I want to know why. This, this, and she was stricken with cancer. I want to know, Lord, why. And the Lord spoke to her and said, for a greater glory. And when she passed away, she didn't pass away with no cancer in the throat. Because God made a commitment. I was going to bring you out. And I sit there leaning on that mantle trouble within my spirit, vexed within my mind. I heard a voice from behind me as that I know it was a man talking to me. And I heard him just as clearly as I can. I'm talking to you now. I heard him say, son. I heard the Lord call me son. 
and I heard him speak within my spirit. He said, I have this. And the burden was moved from my shoulders. I come today to tell you, whatever vexation that's troubling your heart right now, I come to tell you, God's saying, I got it. And I want you to know that God resolved that problem for me. Hallelujah. God worked it out. Oh, God, I could not believe the way God did it. I'm telling you right now, God is not a man that he should lie. Thank you, Jesus. God made promise to him. I've got his promise. That's all I need. <laughs> That's all I need. I, I don't need the embellishment from nobody else. I don't need nobody to fancy it up. I don't need nobody to tell me in five days. I'm a, I don't need them to have none of that. Not unless he comes straight to me and tell me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But I believe I've heard from the, Do you believe you've heard from the Lord? Are you convinced that you've heard in your spirit that God said, I will do it? Then you stand on that commitment. Come hell or high water, when the winds are howling, the thunder rolling, roaring with a great roar, the lightning flashing, trying to conquer your soul, Stand strong, soldier. Stand firm, soldier. Hold on, soldier. You might be the most beautiful woman in the world. My God. But soldier, hold on. I tell you about Shepherd Mother Smith, <laughs> my beautiful wife. But she's a soldier. I'm telling you that right now. So it's a girl that put them dresses together and put their hair up in where she want to and get everything all straightened up and get herself all gussed up and she know how to come stepping out. But I'm going to tell you right now, since a girl know how to pray, she know how to get in the face of God. That's what it's going to take because the devil is going to challenge your faith. He's going to challenge you. Sarah told Abraham, Abraham, I can't have no child. Send uh, Hagar in my maid to you, and you have a child with her for me. And Abraham didn't argue with her. He went on and did it. But then Sarah grew to hate Hagar as Ishmael grew. Told Abraham to get her out of here. Abraham didn't want to do it, but the Lord said, Abraham, you sent her on her way. I'm going to make of her, her son a great nation. And then God made promise to Abraham that one last time before he went down to Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible says Sarah stood in the door of the tent and she laughed when she heard God promise that he was going to open the womb of Sarah. She laughed and said, Will I now found pleasure in my Lord seeing that he's old? But God can go beyond your dilemmas, go beyond. And I said dilemma because there's certain things that if you do, you curse, and certain things if you don't do, you curse, you curse also. That's the way it seems. But God is able to defeat your dilemma. He's able to defeat your problem, your worst case scenario, the worst of the situation that's invaded your territory. Age had invaded Sarah's body. She was past the childbearing age. Abraham, age had invaded his body. He took no interest in Sarah anymore, but God restored his interest and revigorated Sarah's body. And nine months later, because God was committed, 
Has he not said it and will not he do it? He had to do a work. Romans 4 and 19 and 20 tells Abraham who against hope believed in hope. And the God had that had promised was faithful to perform. Our God is an able God. Now, I want to share one last thing with you. He is our almighty God. That's literally what El Shaddai means. The almighty God. El, my God. Almighty God. He is Jehovah Jireh. The supplier of my every need. He is. There is there is no other. There is none other. He declared, if there be another, I know not of him. <clears throat> the, all the other gods are nothing but the figments of men's imagination. I got his promise. That he will never forsake me. I have his promise that he will supply my every need. And I'm going to stand on that. I don't know how long my situation will last. I don't know how, how difficult, how deep the valley may grow. I don't know how high the mountain may, may get to be climbed. But all I know this much is no matter how deep the valley is, he's able to bring me up. No matter how high the mountain is to go, he's able to carry me across. No matter how wide the river is, he's able, my God, to build a bridge across it because he's committed to the performance of his word. Look at somebody and tell them one more time and say, he is so, so committed to me that he's vaulted, elevated his promise to me above the sacredness of his name. He has magnified his word above all of his name. And all who God is, it's not for him to look there. It's for him to do. He said, it's my father, our father's good pleasure <laughs> to give the kingdom to the children. It delights me when my grandchildren come to me and say, Papa, uh, and they don't got so bad now until they just come and when they see something on, on, on Amazon or something they want, they just come and say, Papa, get me this. <laughs> and they say it just like they got every confidence that Papa going to get it. And if it ain't so bad, nine times out of ten, I get it from. Because <clears throat> I don't ever want them leaving me having to figure they got to go somewhere and steal something to get something that they want. I got enough sense to teach them the difference between waiting and not being able to do it. So they know if I really need this and if Papa got it, I can get it. And that's where I want them to leave me. <clears throat> and it delights my heart. When they open the box and they say, oh, pop up. Hallelujah. My God. They open the box and they just say, oh, Papa, especially Timothy. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. And it delights my heart. And you delight the heart of God. My God, when he brings it and lays it at your feet. <clears throat> and you open it up and you say, oh, thank you, Father. And it pains him how dividends when you give him the glory, when you tell him thank you, when you say, Lord, I love you, I worship you, I got your commitment. All that God is for us, is for us. All that God is, is for us. Did you catch that? All that God is, 
is for us. His omnipotence, his omniscience, his omnipresence, his immutability, his efficacy, all of it, his great love, his omnibenevolence, all of it. It's for our good, all things, not all problems. Let's talk, the, 20, the other early verses are talking about the ability of God and all that God is works for our good, for them that are the call. You're just not in it some old body. You are the call of God. Hallelujah. I am the righteousness of God. <clears throat> Remember what I just said to you. All that God is, is for us. God bless you. Bow your heads with me. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, it is in the name of your dear son, Jesus, that we come now, Lord. We want to say thank you. I want to say, Lord, we love you and that we worship and adore you. We thank you for your kindness towards us. We thank you for your strength when our bodies who say you can't go any further. That you whisper in our ear and say, yes, you can. And by your strength, we take more steps forward. And we want to say thank you. Pray now, God, help us to never forget that you, that we have your commitment to our lives. You've obligated yourself to us. No one coerced you into it. No one badgered you into it. You of your own will beget us. And we want to say thank you. Look now, Lord, upon each and every one listening and those who may not. Lord, as I hear about, we pray for a lady, Latina Danner, and her family, and the passing of her brother. I pray, Lord, that you would comfort them and encourage our heart to know that you will not ever leave them. Keep them, Lord, under your care. Remember the Jackson family, all those who are bereaved, names that we call and names that we would not call. But Lord, you know who they are. And we pray for your comfort. Lord, save that one that is not saved today. Give them ears to hear your word and be obedient to it. Do it for your glory, Lord, and we'll praise you. We'll magnify and exalt you. Keep us now, Lord, in your care. And we'll praise you and magnify you as your servant's prayer now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We hope and pray that you have received a word from the Lord today. Uh, we bless God. We thank God for your participation in this program today and we thank God for your continual support financially of these ministries uh, First Refuge of Barnwell and Beulah Refuge here in Orangeburg we thank God for all of you and for your commitment and dedication to the success of these ministries. Let's hold fast, let's hold on we're not going to try to challenge uh, these situations that are there we're just going to Stay in a safe place, as it is told in the book of Isaiah, to when these plagues come through, to go in and shut your door. And we, that's what we're going to do until the storm pass over. I, I, I'm not responsible for what other pastors do. Um, that's their prerogative, and they choose to expose their members uh, to these things, but it's a very serious matter. And we see all over the country where there are various churches have come together and they have 
ended up with a uh, uh, pandemic ready right within their local assemblies. And we certainly pray God covering upon them. But uh, I do not believe that we have the right to try to tempt God and try to prove something. Uh, I believe facing that kind of situation is like jumping out in the middle of a very busy interstate with cars traveling 80, 90 miles an hour and you're jumping out in front of a car at that speed saying, Lord, save me. That's what this is uh, paramount to uh, dealing with this pandemic that we're dealing with. It's a very serious matter and I am urging all of you to take it very seriously. Uh, make sure that you uh, wear your mask and gloves <clears throat> when you do have to come in contact with one another practice social social distancing and, and uh, um, that you will be uh, safe uh, 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 and, and doing these things and uh, just uh, just don't don't have hazardly um, take this um, for granted because it is a very serious matter and we're going to continue our broadcast uh, our Bible study and uh, Sunday morning worship and and many other churches are doing the very same thing. And if you don't see me, it's no problem with you tuning into someone else that may be uh, available. Uh, so we want to stay in touch and as God will give us grace to do. And when that time comes that things are cleared, uh, we'll be able to come together again in our sanctuaries by the grace of God. Amen. Now we want you to join us this coming Wednesday night for Pastoral Bible study at 7:30. We'll be here by the grace of God in the name of Jesus Christ. And we do bless the Lord and we do praise him. I'm going to try to uh, get myself acclimated to some of the um, uh, technology uh, to be able to help my daughters. They are very busy right now in uh, school getting started. And I thank God for them in a very, very special way uh, for all that they do. Uh, the lower rest of these and the better. Uh, for them, their contribution and, and getting me on and you know, the Elder Danner and Elder Mac uh, and the work that they do and, and seeing that this is done in, in a very professional way uh, and uh, we certainly bless God for it in the name of Jesus Christ but I'm going to pick up some, some tips and so I can maybe sometimes can just may not be able to do it uh, through vision uh, or whatever you call it but I can just come straight to you over uh, Pastor Smith, a Facebook account. We're going to work it out. By the grace of God. But tune in this coming Wednesday night for Pastoral Bible Study. We're going to be uh, studying out the Word of God in Jesus' name. God bless you. We love you. Let's keep in touch with Jesus in Jesus' name. You know where I am. If you need me, give me a call. Praise the name of the Lord. And remember, both Shepherd Mother Smith and myself love you dearly. And if anybody tell you different, take them by the hand and sit, tell them. Come on, let's go see Pastor and Mother Smith, and I promise you, they're going to turn your head. God bless you. Let's look to the Lord. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you now, for we do have your commitment to the fulfilling of your word in our lives. Bless us now. Give us hope within our soul, determination within our minds. Watch over and keep us. And now, Lord, as we prepare to depart from another at this, in this juncture, but never from your presence in our spiritual connection together. Keep us, Lord, in your care. Watch over us until you call us unto yourself or you come to receive us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.